Welcome back. How safe is the water at the Jersey Shore? A new report released recently by Environment New Jersey Research and Policy Center found that for 35 days last summer, the water off of some New Jersey beaches was considered unsafe. For more, here's Doug O'Malley, Director of Environment New Jersey. Thanks so much for spending some time with us. An important week for you. Uh, you put out a report on the quality of the water off the Jersey Shore. What did you find? Yeah, no, it's great, great to be here, Larry. And really what the report is saying is that we have a tale of two shores. Our ocean beaches have you know, honestly never, never been better. Right. They uh, and, we, and we are such a long way from the bad old days when we had medical waste washing up on our on our beaches in the late 80s and early 90s. Uh, now, unfortunately, the ocean beaches are are doing great for the most part. You know, we still are seeing a higher number of exceedances than we would like <coughs> along the Barnegat Bay and on the Bay beaches. And the report you know, shows that, um, you know, the number of exceedances is highest. Uh, in uh, the Barnegat Bay and four Ocean County beaches. And, and that's really why, um, you know, we, we've seen this trend. This is not a new trend. Uh, this has been going on for many years now. And, you know, we obviously want to be able to not only raise awareness of the ongoing uh, health exceedances um, on certain days uh, in the Barnegat Bay, but also try to figure out how we reduce uh, that pollution that's flowing into the Barnegat Bay. Well, the headlines all read that in 2020, there were, th was it 35 days or 35 beaches that were unsafe? 35 days of unsafe beaches? That, that's right. It was, it was 35 uh, health exceedances. And then to be clear, kind of what, what, what does that mean? Um, well, th this is based in the report data is based upon uh, the EPA data and specifically EPA's health protective uh, beach, beach action value. Um, and that, that's kind of a fancy way for saying the acceptable rate of, of illness uh, if you go swimming. So the beach action value calculated by EPA is associated with an illness rate of, of 32 out of every 1,000 swimmers. So ideally, no one should get sick because <laughs> they go swimming uh, in the water. And the, the testing occurs up and down the shore uh, and specifically occurs at 210 ocean and bay beaches. So, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, water quality along the shore is, is doing well. It's just that we see kind of a persistent level of uh, health exceedances along some of these bay beaches. And what causes that? What causes them to be unsafe? Yep. So that's, that's coming from a, a couple different um, sources, but the largest is uh, stormwater runoff and stormwater pollution. And just to give you, you know, give the public an idea of what that actually means, you know, this is not, you know, the kind of old style, you know, sludge from a pipe, right? We're not talking about ocean dumping. We're not talking about a direct discharge. Uh, we're talking, you know, in some ways about everything that's not that. Um, and especially after, you know, during and after a big rainstorm, uh, you essentially have all this um, polluted runoff from the rain that travels over grass, it travels over roads, it travels over, you know, anything that's, that's hard. Um, so, you know, in a more natural environment, the rain falls and it percolates back into the ground. In a more built environment, it gets funneled off. Um, and specifically that rainwater, as it travels across hard surfaces, it picks up various pollutants, it picks up bacteria. And what we're increasingly seeing in the Barnegat Bay, as we've seen increased development in the Barnegat Bay watershed, is more of that polluted stormwater running ultimately into the bay. And that's what is triggering the vast majority of these health exceedances. So you would get sick from this and really not know what caused your sickness. That's what it sounds like. It, uh, I was shocked to read that 57 million people across the country ha have gotten sick from polluted water or, or from unsafe beaches. What, wh how do you know if you become sick after you've swam in that water? Yeah, I mean, well, th this is, uh, I think, the biggest challenge, right, is that, you know, again, you, you know, when you go swimming in the water, it, it looks fine. <laughs> but, you know, so it's, it's very hard to kind of contract trace on exactly where you got sick. Um, you know, the best way to kind of know, <laughs> you know, if you if all, you know, five, you know, let's say you have a family of five and you go swimming and, it, you know, you didn't have anything, everybody was healthy, you didn't have anything funny to eat. 
um, and you start, everyone starts to develop symptoms, then it's a little easier to, to kind of try to trace that back. But even that is, is hard to figure out, you know, a, a kid might get, uh, you know, might end up getting more sick than someone in their thirties or forties. Um, so, you know, this is why we have beach testing. Um, uh, we, we want to figure out what the water quality is. And obviously if there's a sign, um, uh, don't ignore it, right. It's there for a reason. Um, but this is also part of the reason that we want to make sure that we have more, uh, beach, uh, testing and also that the testing occurs uh, more quickly because some testing, you know, the tests will come back and, you know, the beach will end up having a, a closure, but not immediately. Um, and so this is really part of the challenge is we obviously need, um, you know, better testing, uh, but we also need to be dealing with the source of the problem. And oftentimes the source of the problem is again, not the sludge from the pipe, but it, it's rain clouds uh, and massive rain, rain events are, are usually what triggers, uh, you know, health exceedances and ultimately beach closings. So we shouldn't be at the mercy of, of rain clouds. Um, and honestly, when you go down the shore, you know, and it looks like it's going to rain on Saturday, uh, you know, the, the, the number one thing you want to do after it rains and the sun comes out is to jump in the water. And depending on where you are, especially in bay beaches, that's exactly the wrong time to go into the water because all of that rain has flushed out pollution uh, onto, uh, onto uh, the ocean and bay beaches. In the Barnegat Bay, it's essentially a massive lagoon. So that water doesn't necessarily get flushed out to sea like it does on the ocean beaches. That's why the Barnegat Bay is so, so sensitive because it, you know, it, is, it is a large lagoon. It is a large lagoon and it's less likely to uh, be able to, to circulate away uh, that uh, polluted stormwater quickly. But in your report, there were beaches. There were beaches that were considered un unsafe for a day that you listed. Unfortunately, it was from last year. Uh, and, and so there's nothing proactive we can do about this year, except, as you said, go after the source. But if the source is a rain cloud, cloud or a rainstorm, how do you prevent that? Yeah. And so th this is this is the problem. Right. And this is why, uh, you know, stormwater pollution has plagued the Bay for, for years now. You know, the solution is not just cracking down on a, a you know, on on sludge coming out of a pipe. And, and if anything, that's, that's not to say that. There aren't issues with sewage infrastructure, and there, there, there obviously are kind of isolated instances of where you do have a direct discharge from, a, from one source. Um, the, you know, that's not good, and you obviously want to fix that, but the, the, the easy part of that is you know exactly why a closure was triggered. You know that source of the pollution. When you're talking about, uh, you know, the broader issue of stormwater pollution, it needs to be a comprehensive solution. And that means that it can't be just a silver bullet. It's not just one thing, but there, there's a couple. There's a couple of approaches here. One is to make sure that we're not loving the shore to death with development. And this isn't just our shore communities. It's also our inland communities in Ocean County, whether it be in Jackson or Lakewood or Manchester. Making sure that we're not building on every part of that watershed land, because the more development that we see across the Barnegat Bay watershed will mean more uh, polluted stormwater ultimately running into the bay. Uh, we also need to do a much better job with our stormwater detention basins and making sure that we're, we have the funding to be able to, you know, not only uh, fix antiquated basins, but also to transition from gray to green infrastructure. The idea being that if we can capture that rainwater before it ends up in a waterway and percolate that down, that's going to be a lot more effective than other solutions. And just yesterday, uh, the U.S. House of Representatives passed a, f a package which includes $40 billion over the next five years for a state's clean water revolving fund. And in, in that package, of $6 billion for green infrastructure. So those are exactly the solutions that we need to be funding. And then, and then finally, we need to make sure in our shore communities that we're creating, creating more living shorelines. So it's not just a concrete bulkhead. You know, the idea being that if we can have a green filter between uh, land and water, that will capture more of that stormwater before it ends up in the bay. Well, as you've said, we've come a long way in the last 20 years. We're a lot safer than we used to be, but we have a long way to go. And much of it is to the credit of your organization. So thank you for what you do and thank you for spending time with us today. Doug O'Malley, Director of Environment New Jersey, still to come on Jersey Matters. I'm Phil Anderson. Coming up on Jersey Matters, I challenge you to a duel on guard.